Welcome uh, to this Q&A with David Ossett, uh, who has made a, uh, I think, a remarkable film called Mayor. Um, I first saw it uh, when I was a judge at the Full Frame Film Festival, and um, myself and my judging colleagues gave it the, the, uh, the top prize. We, we loved it so much. Um, it's particularly interesting to me, too, because uh, I have a, a docu series out um, called City So Real, which which uh, is like a kindred spirit, I think, David, to your <laughs> and we 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 initiate a contact uh, in the wake of that. Um, I I so I feel like I know what I was up. I, I feel like I know what you were up against in trying to craft this kind of story. Um, what when you what was your initial conception going in about what it was you were doing uh maybe versus what you ended up doing or were they the same yeah i think um it, it's funny because the, they ultimately ended up being the same in part because what i wanted to do was explore this city um in a way that felt to me like it was otherwise completely unexplored in that there are so many films made about the Israel-Palestine situation. And I think a lot of these films, even the ones with great intentions, tend to take a really one-dimensional stance when it comes to depicting Palestinian lives. And I think that, to me, seemed like a, a really fertile place to create a new kind of uh, dimensionality and some new imagery and add imagery to the idea of what Palestine could look like. And to do that through the lens of local government felt really enticing to me because I mean Ramallah is a fascinating city as you as you see in the film and and but the first time I went I was blown away by the number of you know hipster bars and nightclubs and free unlimited public Wi-Fi and a Jaguar dealership and this Christian town and I was there for the first time around Christmas celebrations and I I asked a Palestinian friend you know why is everyone so into Christmas here and he's like well you know Jesus is a hometown hero, you know, he was born like right over there. And, and I think all this stuff was like, yeah, I guess I know this logically. And I had spent like a decade in and out of the Middle East working, but it was still kept feeling like a shock to me. And so what I ended up feeling was like, I was surprised that I was surprised. And I wanted to make a film that rendered that surprise for an audience so that they could engage with this place and not with the geopolitics of this place and engage with the people in the place, but not with this macro conception of how we're supposed to understand things through sound bites and through a kind of monolithic media representation. What if I could just bring you into a local government and, and a municipal hearing to see how this city runs and how it might remind you of your city? And that was really enticing to me. And that's that's really where the, the project formulated. Yeah, well, it it certainly delivers, and there there I think for people like myself who have the barest of understanding really of what goes on in the Middle East, I've never really been there. I mean, I I dutifully read, you know, keep up in 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 modest ways, but um, you know, I had certain ideas about what Ramallah would be, of course, and the 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 film really um, uh, pulls the rug out in, in a great great way uh, of what those expectations were not the least of which is at a certain point when you find out that the mayor is Christian. Um, for me, again, my level of knowledge is so pedestrian. Um, given his activism, I remember being surprised and wondering like, oh, but he's Christian, but his, he's, he's very upset about this situation that's going on. Um, I mean, was that a surprise to you or, or, or was that something that, that you were able to, uh, you knew you were going to try to tease out as, as the film un unfolds? Yeah, it was, it was, there was, I did a lot of research before I started filming. Um, I, I researched for about a year before I started filming and would travel there, would meet people, would talk to people. I had this, this obscenely large Rolodex of just contacts. So I felt like I was putting my foot into the ground, not as an outsider, I mean, there was a, of course, there's a degree to which I would always be an outsider, but I, I, I wanted to do everything I could to not feel as though I were parachuting in and extracting and coming out. And part of that was I just learned so much about Ramallah's history. And part of the history of Ramallah is that there's an old Ottoman law back when, before Palestine, you know, before Israel, when, when Ramallah was just a part of the Ottoman Empire, where the Christian towns had Christian mayors and the Muslim towns had Muslim mayors and Ramallah was historically a Christian city. And so the mayor has to be Christian. And 
all the mayors are descended from this group of, of Christian families. And it was fascinating to me, but I think what ended up being more fascinating as I was filming there was how little it mattered to anyone else. Yeah. And I think that was more exciting for me to depict. And I think that's a theme in the film, like depicting banality was really exciting to me in this movie. Like, how can I depict the banality of the fact that you think to yourself, oh, this sort of like, oh, wow, Christians in Palestine, that must be a flashpoint. That must be something. But in the local governance of Ramallah, it's just, that's just the way it is. And and I, I felt in a similar way to depicting certain moments of, 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 of violence and, and, and tragedy in the film, the banality is actually what makes it at, at times more disturbing because you, you get the sense that this is so uh, part of daily life and the way in which Musa responds and even the way in which certain people respond at protests and uh, just like, oh, here we go again, same chaos, same story sort of, sort of thing. That is what informed me and what stood out to me. And if I, if I had to point at what surprised me most while I was filming, it was those moments where I couldn't help but be bringing all my Western baggage in thinking this must be a big deal and everyone's going to be thinking about this or talking about this and realizing that my rubric was wrong. I think we've been in the West conditioned to think that this is a, a religious conflict and there's religious problems here, but this is a, a, a state uh, that, that's that been occupied by another state. And right. the crisis here is that people don't have agency. They don't have their land. They don't have control over their borders, the freedom of movement. They don't have their own currency, stuff like that. When you frame it in that lens, it becomes much more relatable. And that was what was so enticing to me. Yeah, absolutely. You, well, and it's, and it's, it's even for, again, for someone who's as uneducated about this as, as I was before I watched your film, it's, it's actually quite, uh, encouraging to see um, people across religious divides, normally considered quite significant in that part of the world, um, having common purpose um, in this town. Uh, that that was that was really lovely to see. Uh, and did, did was the mayor always going to be at the center of your story, or did that just kind of emerge? The mayor was always at the center of my mind. Um, but the but the mayor was almost like the sun that all these different spokes were, were, all these different planets were orbiting. I filmed about 350 hours of footage, which by, you know, by by verite standards is is somewhere in the middle ground, you know, it can get, be a these lot days. more, as you know, it could be a lot these less. Days, yeah. uh, but but I, uh, I was filming a, a lot of things and a lot of locations. And I think at the beginning, a lot of my filming was was to film information for myself, you know, not just filming things that I thought would be great scenes, but trying to figure out what what sang to me in the edit room, what was exciting to me. There's something that Fred Wiseman always talks about, which I really love, which is that he's not going to be able to make a good scene if he's bored by by what he's filming. And I would try to cast a wide net and, and see what was enticing. And I had different characters. I had different locations. I had I was filming in refugee camps outside of Ramallah. I was filming near the settlements. I was filming um, tons of different meetings and 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 with and did interviews for the film. I interviewed everybody in the film, but no interviews made it into the film because oh. there was something that felt really visceral about just following Musa in his day to day. And I think that there's a certain point where any filmmaker is, you know, a few months or, or maybe a year into filming and they look back at their footage and they think to themselves, you know, what's really singing here? Like, what is the material that I've been collecting that just feels like I've never seen it before, or I'm so excited by it. And it gets me excited to tell this story. And it was always the sort of visual storytelling of tracking Musa in these moments of consternation and him fighting for dignity, but in this very soft way and more reminiscent of like a, a, a golden age of Hollywood character. He reminded me of like a Gary Cooper or a Jacques Tati sort of uh, protagonist, just trying to go through his daily life and all the frustrations that went on to his work. And then it, as I kept thinking about that, I kept thinking, wow, like may, maybe what I'm really doing here is I'm, I'm making a fable, but a fable in a really complicated place. And I think that if you tell us a simple story in a complicated place, the non-fable elements, you know, the elements that um, kind of butt up against the, the simple story of a, of a man in his Christmas celebrations or a man in his fountain or a man in his sewage treatment plant, all the stuff that, that doesn't fit into that lens, that's what ends up becoming even more um, tragic. And that, that can be what, what kind of makes the, makes the absurdity and the humor stand out even more. 
Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it is he is kind of Capra esque, I would say, as a as a as a subject, and 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 given his devotion to this fountain and, and to yeah. get this fountain, um, it 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 has it it even has some of those kind of comic, um, you know, possibilities that that play out in the film. What was he like to film? He seemed so open and and receptive. Was it was he always thus, or did was that a process? Uh, he was always really open. He, he was, you know, he was frankly fantastic to film with. The only thing he said when I first met him and kind of pitched him on the film was, "That sounds great, just don't make me the main character." And I said, <laughs> "I said, okay, that we'll, we'll talk about that later." But I think it came from this really wonderful place, which we talked about a bunch in the following years where he was like, he would always say also in meetings, you know, I don't own this office, I'm borrowing it. I, I don't, I'm not the mayor for life. I'm not Mayor Musa. I, I happen to be the mayor at the moment. I was elected. This is my second term. It's my last term. I'm out of here after that. And I think for him, it was really important to, to show the office, not the man. And I, that's what, that's what was important to me too. So it was nice that we were aligned in that way. And I also think that partly what was so great about our filming relationship, which I mean, I couldn't have made the film if I didn't have a good relationship with Musa. It was really important for me to feel like he was a collaborator with me. But the thing that was ultimately great about our relationship was that we had the same goals. You know, like I wanted to make a film that showed this different side of Ramallah and through his eyes, he through his eyes wanted to show Ramallah to the rest of the world. And then he goes around the world doing very much that and, and does that even in his own city and building this little pocket version of Amsterdam within Ramallah with the town square that hopefully you know and kind of kind of recognize by the end of the film and so I think the fact that we had the same goals it was just that I was the one with the camera made it very easy to feel as though we were collaborating and I think that the film would have been really tricky if if I didn't feel like he felt comfortable understanding what I wanted to do and that I could understand that he wasn't going to shut me out at any point. Right yeah I I I have said frequently when I, you know, talk to younger filmmakers or students is that, you know, that, that the, the key, I think the key to this kind of filmmaking is having subjects who share the same interest in what it is you're making. Um, and, you know, some people are a little caught up in the idea that, you know, there's the flattery of it. I, oh, I'm going to be the subject of a film, but that doesn't last very long if they if they're not really <laughs> into what you're doing. And it sounds like in the case of Musa that he was, uh, if anything, he was more humble about that, not wanting to be the center of the film. And so so being able to identify and be on the same page doesn't mean that you're going to make the film ultimately exactly like he'd want it to be because, you know, you're a documentary filmmaker, but but your intentions are are in the same direction, which which makes I think makes all the difference in the world. Um, talk a little bit about the ways in which, and this may be more of an editing question, but it's certainly a shooting question too, of uh, the ways in which you sort of interweave the kind of more mosaic portrait of of, of Ramallah. In I'm thinking of you know scenes like the the nightclub, um, which is quite beautiful and sens sensual and sensory. Uh, experience that that is is just sits on its own yeah, um, with you know it's not tied to any narrative uh, uh, of what we're watching uh, it's surprising I think to western viewers because we we would think that 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 or I would think that a club like that doesn't necessarily exist in Ramallah but outside of that um, there's a number of places in the film where you kind of fold in a kind of more mosaic portrait of the city talk about that yeah, it was it was almost artifacts actually from from this early conception of the film that it would be this more kaleidoscopic view of Ramallah and it wouldn't just be Musa and it wouldn't just be his city and there would be these elements like you're also I think there's another moment that's really close to the moment you're referring to which is one of my favorite moments in the film where it's just um, a bunch of teenagers standing on a rooftop looking at the settlement nearby and talking about it and then that goes into this sort of nightclub scene and uh, that that was all stuff that just was like th th there's a there's a wider I wanted to always remind you that there was a wider view of Ramallah outside of just Musa's perspective uh, but always keeping the film grounded in that and the the more editing and streamlining the film 
received with with trying to hone in on Musso's story and hone in on the story of the fountain, the more I realized that there there was just this need for just these these tiny reminders here and there that there is a world outside of just these this two block radius and but still doing it in a way that kept the fairy tale fable element of his story intact and that really goes back to essentially what what the theme of the film ended up being for me as I was in the edit room which was approaching this idea of depicting dignity which I don't see depicted a lot in films about pretty much any part of the global south and and I and I was really excited to depict dignity not just pride but dignity and I think that when when at the beginning of the film when you're seeing these uh you know Christmas celebrations and parkouring Santa Clauses perhaps they seem undignified or perhaps they seem like oh this is perhaps an interesting way to spend your time as mayor to plan these events but I think by the end of the film you realize that they are acts of resistance and I think by the end of the film you realize that people in a nightclub in Palestine that's an act of resistance mm -hmm. people living their lives I mean when 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 you're in a country that you know that is like Palestine, which is not a country. And when you're in a city that doesn't have a country, I think literally the act of just existing is a political act. And so how do you depict that? It's by showing people living, but, li but a living doesn't really come across cinematically unless it's imbued with something. And that, the, the, that, that experience of being alive can only be imbued with power and hope if it's contrasted with how difficult it is to do these minor things and to create festivals and, and and enjoy your life in any meaningful way. Yeah, and and consistently um, conversations or issues wind their way back around to the occupation in interesting ways. It's it's always there, uh, and it's and it's never forgotten. But yet, it doesn't fully define people's lives, which is I think one of the great strengths of the of the film. And you shot the film yourself. Did. Yeah, it was only yeah. me as the sole production member. So it was running around and, and getting into cars, which only one person, which was a lot easier than if I had a crew, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's beautifully, it's beautifully shot um, as well. Yeah. So um, this is going to sound like a self serving question, because you know, I went and shot thinking I was going to make a, a movie, a standalone documentary, and then ended up making a Five plus hour miniseries. Um, why isn't yours a miniseries? Why why do you have such such an ability to dis, to distill it down to a to a feature length film? And I was unable to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's such a wonderful question. Although it, it does a massive disservice to how incredible, how truly incredible your miniseries is, Steve. But um, but I I to be honest with you, um, if I'm going to even attempt to answer that, I feel like. The, for me, I got really excited over something that I feel like doesn't excite a lot of filmmakers, which is I want to tell as small of a story as possible. Mm -hmm. That that's really what this the that there was this like onus at, at the beginning and during the middle, and especially when I first met Musa, of just realizing that the film had potential to be funny and grounded more so in humor, because I feel like that's so rare and that was so exciting to me as yeah. someone who just spent time in Ramallah and have, has seen the wonderful sense of humor and the, 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 the complexity of life there. And the first time I met Musa, I go into his office and I hear, I, I'm sitting down on the couch where you see people sitting in the film and, and he's wrapping up the phone call and he's saying like, listen, man, I told you not to park there. You won't get a traffic ticket. If you don't park there, you gotta stop calling me. I'm not the chosen one, I'm just the mayor. And there was like, it was this amazing moment. I was like, that's the movie. I, 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 think, I think this is going to be the movie. And, and it felt small and, and I liked that it felt small because I think something small gives you permission to think more and gives you permission to feel more. And I was, I, I, I guess all of this was really deeply conscious on my part to at the beginning think, what can I do that I haven't seen before in a documentary about this part of the world? What can make me feel something different? I feel like so frequently I'm being told information and then expected to be angry. But what if I put the, what if I put the feelings first and then allowed an audience room to create their own inferences from that? And I feel like, I guess in part, it's a sort of rejection of what I think of as like foie gras filmmaking, where you're stuffing all these feelings down an audience's throat at the beginning, but not necessarily giving them a space to carve out where they can occupy some, some, some feelings of how it might feel to be in his shoes or to be a citizen of this place. And 
the smaller the film was, the more it felt like I was accomplishing that. So I think the reason it ended up being one movie is because I, I was thinking to myself, what is the, you know, when I first started editing, I wrote a, like a three page short story. And I do that for a lot of films that I work on. I just literally wrote a short story about the film that's just like, what, what would be the perfect version of this film as far as I could make it? What would excite me the most to see? And some scenes I hadn't shot yet, some scenes I had, but what's the perfect idea of this film? And I kept bringing myself back to this fountain and the film ending with this fountain as this symbol. And I just knew that I, I could have made the film bigger and I would ask trusted advisors and friends, like, do you think this film's too small? Do you think it could be more geopolitical? Should I go into more detail? And some people would say yes, but mostly people would just be like, but I love that how the, the one enduring image from this film is that I'm watching this Bellagio style fountain at the end of the, and that's, that's this beautiful image to leave people on. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves. You know, I don't know how much I remember from films I saw five years ago, but I remember moments from films that I loved. And if I can create a movie or a story for you that the next time you think of Palestine, you're not thinking of one dimensional victims uh, right. or agents of suffering, but you're thinking of people with dignity who are watching this incredible water fountain show. I, I think that's a victory. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, and as you touched on earlier, it 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 throws into sharp relief the moments where there are are legitimate, real tensions that that more align with people's expectations. But even there, and I'm thinking that towards the end of the movie when the Israelis are you know soldiers are in the streets, um, I'm sitting there hoping that I'm not going to see this turn into a nightmare scenario and. You know, it it was nightmarish enough for the people that lived there, but it, but it it never became that stereotypical thing that we imagine it always is going to be. And what you know, frankly, I think so much of documentary is is as a as a form has historically been focused on tragedy, um, and and really um, reveling in that tragedy. That that a lot of times I think. Um, filmmakers sometimes tend to, to forget the, the more human parts of the story that's right in front of them. Um, and the, and the, the funny parts, uh, you know, there's certainly a lack of humor in documentary <laughs> overall. Yeah. So I think it's great. You know, I think you, you really managed to accomplish that. Okay. I think we have to wrap up, but I want to ask, because I'm sure for people watching this who can't talk to you directly about it, they, they will have this question. Um, what was M Musa's response to seeing the film, and were you able to show it back in Ramallah and have some screenings? And and what was the what was the response there? Yeah, uh, I showed Musa and his family the the rough cut of the film when I was last in Palestine in January before the before the pandemic. They loved it, uh, which was great. I, I I don't mean this to sound hubristic or vain, but like I would have been really really shocked if he didn't like it because I I worked really hard to make the film through his eyes you know and to show his vision of the city and it just it just wouldn't have made sense if he didn't like the film it would have like really disturbed me um but but he did love it and his family loved it which was great and uh we did have plans to show the film in Ramallah uh the pandemic had made that impossible um but we are gonna do that very soon hopefully and the film will be available uh worldwide in, in 2021 january 1st and uh so so there's going to be lots of chances for people to see it outside of the states which is great uh but yeah i i, I truly can't wait to, there's a there's a there's a movie theater inside of city hall uh where we would hopefully show the film and that would be absolutely. that would be pretty special absolutely and then have a reception by the fountain exactly <laughs> yeah, very much so yeah <laughs> Uh, so he didn't say, you made me the center of this movie. I told you not to do that. He, I think he figured it out by the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations again on the film. It's a, it's a lovely film, beautifully made, beautifully put together and conceived. Uh, certainly one of my favorite docs of the year, without question. Um, and my dog is weighing in now. Um, and I wish you all the best with it uh, as it goes out in the world. Thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate it.